How's it going y'all? It's Ben Aqua and in today's video I'm going to be vlogging with the 14 millimeter f 1.8 G Master lens from Sony. Thank you so much to Sony for sending me this lens. I'll leave a link to buy it in the description below. What you're seeing right now is actually the Tamron 17 to 28 f 2.8 lens. So let's actually switch over to the Sony lens in three, two, one. And now you're seeing the Sony 14 millimeter f 1.8 lens. It's a lot wider, weirdly, from 17 millimeters down to 14 millimeters. It makes a pretty big difference. And it looks like the ISO dropped down to 320 before that 17 millimeter lens was using ISO 640. And I'm also excited because I'm seeing that the f-stop is now down to 1.8 and you're letting a lot more light into the lens. You can use lower ISOs, you can get less grainy footage, you get a wider view. Already, I think this lens, just looking at the preview screen, just looks incredible. Let's do a little quick autofocus test. And wow, now y'all are seeing all of my freaking pores. You're welcome. I'll go back here and then back up here. Pretty good. Let's do it one more time quick. Okay. That's enough of my pores for now. And my camera, by the way, is the Sony A7C full frame. Another product I'm also testing out in this video for fun is the D4 Duo mic from Deity. Thank you so much to Deity for sending me this microphone. Please smash that like button. It really helps me out in the algorithm. And yeah, let's go vlog. So one thing I'm already loving about this lens is just how small it is. It's really easy to just slap on the camera body and then just start going. So this lens is incredibly wide as well as you can see. It's like ultra wide, almost fisheye. This kind of huge wide angle is not meant for everybody, but if you're doing something like vlogging, I think this lens is actually really amazing. It's so wide that I'm barely even holding this camera out at like a full arm's length right now and I can see like everything. One of the benefits, I guess the big benefit of having such a wide lens is being able to see everything around you when you're vlogging. So if you're doing that kind of style of where you're just like walking around and there's a lot of things behind you and you want to accentuate like how cool this wall is behind me or something, this is an amazing lens and probably the widest lens that I've used for Sony so far besides my 17 millimeter. But 14 millimeter I think makes a huge difference, but you will see a little bit of distortion, sometimes a lot of distortion. You can see like some of the lines back here are kind of exaggerated towards the sides and it makes me look kind of tiny if I have the camera all the way out here at arm's length. And you'll see a little bit of distortion, like the kind of curviness of the lines around me. They're not like perfectly rectilinear, I think is the correct word for it. Walking around and vlogging with this lens, what are my first thoughts about it? Well, I love how small it is, first of all. If you're thinking about getting like a super wide lens that you don't necessarily need a whole lot of zoom range or any zoom range, but you want a little bit of a gigantic aperture like the f 1.8, which is what I'm shooting at. Actually, it's shooting at f 2.8 right now because I have a kind of auto ISO situation going. This is really impressive considering like you can see how much light there is right now. I'm in a very low light situation and there's no direct sunlight on me right now, but I'm shooting in ISO 100, which is kind of amazing. 
this is a really good test of the low light capabilities of this lens. I mean, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments, but I think this looks, just looking at the preview screen, I think this looks absolutely fantastic. This car keeps going by. It sounds like all the windows are about to explode. Anyway though, I love how wide this lens is and I love the color renditions like everywhere I was going and shooting all kinds of stuff and the colors were looking very natural and sharpness looks really on point from what I can tell and skin tones look really good using this lens also. And this is a good example of just shooting around here where there's a lot of buildings too. Like it really accentuates the angles, you know, like certain um, taller buildings will be shooting towards the corners. You can kind of see the exaggeration, but I think it has a really cool effect and I can see this lens, of course, being used by real estate. You know, if you're shooting for a real estate company and you want like a really wide version of a room to be photographed, this is the perfect lens for that. But there will be a little bit of distortion in the corners, but it is also nice that I can not have to hold the camera all the way out, you know, arm's length and kind of hold it a little bit in and it looks generally pretty natural and I can see everything behind me and there is a little bit of background blur you know it's not going to be the most vocalicious lens because it is so wide but if you want these kind of shots where you're just kind of talking to the camera in a studio or in a low light situation which I'm in right now this is actually a really beautiful lens for that and this definitely looks noticeably wider than my 17 to 28 lens from Tamron and I noticed more background blur than that lens as well. Also because this lens is so ultra wide at 14 millimeters, I notice a little bit of vignetting like in the corners of the frame. You can see like it, it kind of gets darker towards the edges and I am shooting at f2.2 right now. So that can probably be corrected a little bit if you use a smaller aperture, like if the f number actually goes up a little bit, but it's a really wide aperture lens and I really want to utilize that as much as possible, especially in low light situations where I don't want to bump the ISO too much. And just looking at my screen, I'm actually still shooting at 100 ISO in, um, it's not pure darkness, but it's, you know, there's barely any natural light now and it's kind of amazing that this camera still wants to shoot at ISO 100. So who is this lens for? This lens is for people that have between 15 and $1,600. <laughs> it is not cheap. It's double the price of the Tamron 17 to 28 lens. If I needed this kind of lens where I needed the ultra wide look, like if I was shooting a lot of real estate, if I did a lot of really ultra wide kind of shots, maybe in the studio, I could also see this being a really good on camera, like YouTube type of thing where you're in the studio and you want a really wide view of, you know, your entire studio behind you or whatever, and still get a pretty good amount of background blur. But because this is such a wide angle, like you can see when I'm, when my hand gets kind of close to the camera, it's, it looks, it looks huge, right? Because the wide angle is so ultra wide that it looks to me kind of unnatural. And I don't think I'd want to use 14 millimeter for like all of my YouTube shots. Like my head would look really big if it comes closer towards the camera. But at the same time, I think this lens is also an incredible, incredible lens when it comes to optics, when it comes to sharpness and colors. I will say this though, this lens is built insanely well and it is a G Master lens. It is $1,600, so it better be built well at that price. And I can attest to that. The focus ring, everything feels extremely smooth on it. And the autofocus seems like it does a pretty good job. It's a little jerky when it gets really close to things. Sometimes there's a little bit of focus hunting when especially it's, you know, you're pretty up close with something. But for the most part, the autofocus seems to do a pretty good job, especially with the eye tracking. And there's not a lot of drama in terms of its size. You know, it's not one of those gigantic lenses that you can't fit in any bag and it weighs like a ton. This lens is actually very lightweight. It's very small. It has a really nice lens cap on it too, that the lens cap actually will lock onto the end of the lens. It goes on really easily, takes off really easily. I really like that detail. So overall, yeah, you're paying $1,600 for a ultra wide lens, but you get a lot of bang for the buck if you have that kind of budget. As you can see, I've lost almost all of my light out here. The lens is still doing really well though. I'm at ISO 250, that's insane. It's almost completely dark here. Look how bright it looks with this amazing Apple Store glow. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me about this lens or if you have used this lens and you really like it, let me know in the comments below. I love to see y'all down there. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe if you're not already. My name is Ben Aqua. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.